Yes, uh, Marshal Do, I want to welcome colleagues from the media to this uh, press briefing that has been called at our Secretariat. A number of briefings that have been called at Secretariat, which I think are very important to discuss a number of uh, pertinent issues. Let me recognize the presence of our member of the Central Committee, Chairman for Industry, uh, Honorable Bongambi. We also have in our Mideast uh, Council at the far end, and uh, Ambassador Mwamba, who is Chairman for Information, uh, who, is also, who is going to address you, the media. Uh, without uh, wasting your time, let me take this opportunity to call upon uh, Ambassador Mwamba to address you. Ambassador Mwamba. Thank you very much, Acting Media Director, Mr. Edwin Lifekelo. Thank you, Dr. Frank Ngambi, our member of Central Committee and Chairperson of Industry, and our dear brother, Celestine Mukandila, uh, a renowned lawyer in Lusaka, and is very active in Matero, but is also active with the media. We are privileged, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, invite you to today's brief. We thought that there are a lot of developing issues that we could quickly attend to. Um, Emmanuel Mwamba, a member of the Central Committee and uh, Chairperson for Information and Publicity. We have basically five issues other than the other matters that you might raise, but we basically have five issues that we want to inform you. Number one, the Central Committee meeting. Just allow our colleagues to prepare quickly. <clears throat> the Secretary General, Honorable Rafael Nagachinda, has called for a scheduled Central Committee that will be held on Saturday, 21st October 2023. Among the issues requiring discussion, debate, and determination by the Central Committee will include the update and proposed fresh debts regarding the holding of the Constitutional Conference and Extraordinary General Conference. You will remember that these were previously due on 29th July 2023 and 28th October 2023. So the Central Committee will be making determination about this matter and other matters. There are also issues of discipline, matters of disciplinary cases that will be handled during this meeting of uh, the Central Committee. There are other matters, again, that uh, the meeting will, will, will use the opportunity to resolve. Number two, there is a long-standing issue planned by government to deregister the Patriotic Front and also other opposition political parties. We have frequently spoken about this. We thought with a letter by the Registrar of Societies yesterday that we must speak to this matter. Uh, you will remember that on 25th April 2023, the Registrar of Societies wrote to the Patriotic Front warning the party that it faced deregistration for alleged failure to comply with our earlier order she had written to us on 21st March 2023, that we had failed to avail a full and complete, complete list of office bearers. The Chief Registrar of Society, uh, Madam Tandi Muhende, claimed that the PF had only submitted three office bearers instead of ten as required by the law. Of course, this was political mischief. Our acting president, Honorable Given Lubinda, held a press conference here in which we provided proof that we had submitted a list of four office bearers as approved by the Central Committee that was held on 17th April 2021 at Mulungushi International Conference Center. This was shortly after the party successfully held its regular general conference at which it elected the party president, members of the Central Committee, for a mandate of five years from 2021 to 2026. However, to satisfy the fresh demands of the Chief Registrar of Societies, we proceeded to submit everything that was required. We even included another set of 
five new names. So the law requires 10. We submitted 15. We submitted fingerprints. They even wanted irregular things that are not provided for in the law, such as curriculum vitae for office bearers. We submitted all this. This matter, we thought had died. Yesterday, you must remember that uh, the chief registrar issued a, a notice in which she has given political parties 60 days in which to fill the vacancies uh, that exist in political parties and that we should go to either elections or intra-party decisions. She's citing Section 3, Sabbatical 2 of the Societies Act, Chapter 119 of the Laws of Zambia. And strangely, a new statutory instrument, number 592 of 2023, that was issued on 9th May 2023. Under the, the, this SI, the minister has issued fresh direct directives. The Minister of Home Affairs and Interior Security has issued fresh directives to the Chief Registrar uh, in order to, I think, to strengthen our oppressive powers. Um, she has, the minister has provided the following, that the registrar should enforce and ensure that all registered societies in Zambia are compliant with the Constitution of Zambia, the Societies Act, and res respective provisions of the Constitution. That number two, that where an elected office bearer resigns, dies, or is removed from office for whatever reason, the registrar shall ensure that the society holds elections for the appointment of the new office bearer within 30 days from the issuance of the directives. So she has provided discretion and provided for 60 days. Now, we should remember that just in April, the chief registrar of society said her office had no powers to supervise political parties. She had no powers to compel political parties to hold elective convention or conferences. And that she had no powers in the event that political powers, political parties violated their own party statutes or party constitutions. So what has changed? Sure. What has changed is this new law passed by the Minister of Home Affairs the statutory instrument number 592 issued on 9th May 2023. The registrar had said she had no such powers because you remember that our member of parliament, Honorable Mao Sampa, who is uh, a suspended member, wrote to the chief registrar giving us seven days in which to order the Patriotic Front to hold an extraordinary general conference because he claimed that the position of president in the PF and the position of uh, secretary general were vacant. So she responded that she had no such powers. So the minister of home affairs proceeded to provide these powers under this statutory instrument issued in May. Now, this is a cowardly act and it's illegal. Yes. Thank you very much. Section 3 Sabbatical 2 of the Societies Act, Chapter 119 of the Laws of Zambia, where they are basing this statutory instrument, allows the minister to issue instructions to the chief registrar of how she should operate. It relates to her duties. For example, if she wants to work on, if the minister thinks that there's backlog of work and they want her to work on Saturday, the minister can issue directives or a memo. They are abusing the law. The cowardly act by the minister to issue this SI is illegal. The statutory instrument in itself must be ignored by political parties because it's not founded in law. Mm. The correct thing to do by the minister, if they want to provide these powers to the chief registrar of societies, is to go back to parliament and amend the law. The yes. minister must propose these provisions and amend the Societies Act. He cannot do through a statutory instrument and give her powers, uh, extrajudicial powers that she doesn't have. So the 
minister has acted in an overreaching manner and has acted illegally. The chief registrar of society cannot outlaw our party constitution. She can't. Because the effect of a directive that we should go to uh, party conference within 60 days is that it doesn't matter what is provided for in our party constitutions. Her decision overrides us, overrides our party statutes, hence the illegality. In fact, the very law they are trying to rely on, Article 60 of the Republican Constitution, uh, there is no enabling law that has been provided for. You colleagues in the media, you are aware that we've been trying to put up the Political Party Act. This is in response to the provisions in the new constitution of Article 60, where it will provide for a new registrar to, to run political parties, where it should provide for these new powers. You cannot enable the, con the constitution through a statutory instrument. In fact, this is a high political mischief. My dear brother, welcome. The Minister of Home Affairs and Interior Affairs, Honorable Jack Nimbu, is a lawyer of national and international repute. He's not only a parliamentarian, but he's well versed with the law. Even he himself, when he issued this notice, this um, uh, SI, is aware that his actions were illegal. He's aware. They just assume that he will not take note. So from the standpoint of the, polit of, of the patriotic front, this SI is illegal. At best, we'll ignore it. We might pursue judicial review just to enforce the law and to expose the illegality. But at best, it's best ignored because uh, 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 you cannot follow illegalities. This is a total illegality. Yes. Another matter, we have concerns around the Electoral Commission of Zambia. The appointment of Mrs. Mwangala Zalomis as chairperson of the commission and a Mr. McDonald Penzi, these are well known to the country as UPND members, was heavily opposed. We objected to this appointment. So, sir. So, sir. We stated that if the appointment went through, the independence, autonomy, and impartiality of the Electoral Commission of Zambia will be violated. Despite the vehement objection from political parties, from the church, and from other stakeholders, President Akainde Ichilem and his government proceeded with the appointments, and they used the bully and arrogance of numbers in parliament to force through this appointment. Like they're trying to do with the illegal appointment of the Auditor General. Further, the appointment of members of the Electoral Commission of Zambia Advisory Committee on Election Management, it is headed by uh, Honorable Mrs. Justice Maria Mapani Kawimbe, is a matter of concern to us. So the issues around this is that is that the commission is not balanced. They brought uh, partisan characters to the commission. Uh, they are further making other appointments that are of concern to us. We are not pleased with the lack of transparency, the failure to engage public awareness and campaigns surrounding the continuous voter registration exercise that commenced in June 2022 in 10 provinces. Further, our Secretary General, Honorable Rafael Nakachinda, revealed a matter of serious concern that there are secret registration of voters that is occurring in certain regions. And the mobile issuance of NRC that is being done by the National Registration Office under Home Affairs again is not being done in an open and transparent manner. In short, the secret voting, secret voter registration exercise going on, NRCs are being issued and voter registration is being done. This allegation was so serious that we expected a proper response from the Electoral Commission of Zambia. But what we saw from this is it were threats 
that they were going to report the SG to the police, that they were going to subject him to, uh, to law enforcement agencies. What we expected from ECZ is that they were going to investigate these serious allegations. We invite you, the media, we invite other political parties and other stakeholders to take note of the occurrences at the Electoral Commission of Zambia. These activities are being planned and are being designed to attempt to fashion the outcome of the 2026 elections. Yeah. And the matters have started too early. We ought to be alert and to be vigilant. Our call to ECZ is that this matter has been brought to your attention. The Secretary General of our party will follow up with a formal complaint. Your duty is to investigate these allegations. Or you may not be investigating because you have a chairperson that we consider is partisan, is UPND. You have a key member in McDonald's Pens who we consider a UPND member. Maybe that's why you are allowing these illegalities. That's why you are preparing a process that might undermine the 2026 elections. Shem, I agree with you. We also direct our party structures across the country to take keen interest in these activities. If you hear that there's voter registration taking place, please go there, take pictures, and also participate. Go with your identities. Because the awareness and the campaign is poor. So they might be disenfranchising citizens quietly. We are letting you be alert and participate in the process and take evidence, take pictures and alert Lusaka. Again, if you see any NRC mobile issuance that is taking place, take interest. Go and queue up as well. If your children do not have NRC, let them take and take pictures. There is something sinister occurring while we are focused on the debate on high cost of living, high cost of millimeal, high cost of fuel. There are things that are occurring that might require your urgent attention. And lastly, the acting president, Honorable Given Lubin, has issued a directive that we are going to have mass public rallies across the country. Our first rally uh, in Zingalume at Muchinga Grounds was frustrated. Lusaka province is requested to uh, seek a fresh notice despite the activities by the police where they're trying to take away our fundamental rights. The instructions are that issue fresh notices, set fresh debts. And this instruction is just not to Lusaka, it's to all party structures across the country. Our able members of Central Committee are ready to travel even at short notice. If you have a rally in Rundazi, in Shangombo, in Solwezi, we are ready to come and address our people over the issues of concern. The party, provincial, and district committees have also been directed to scale up activities, mobilization programs to rebuild, strengthen, and enhance party structures. Don't go to sleep. We are only remaining with 36 months. The clock is ticking. Question of 36 months. Filamu ya watu kufiri ukutali. Tafiri ukutali. Tuambi okubomba nombalini. Those are the instructions from the acting president. Yes. The police may try to frustrate you, but Lusaka headquarters will try to do everything to protect our fundamental rights, to associate, to express ourselves, and also to mobilize, to assemble. These are fundamental rights. The police have no powers to take away these rights. The time is now. Only 36 months. If we're not quite on a calendar for no secretariat. In fact, we're short at five months. So do the same in your provinces. Let's begin to mobilize. With those viewers, I'd like to thank you for hearing and listening to us and uh, our party structures that have come and our leaders. Thank you for uh, coming. Uh, we may take questions. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Information, Ambassador Mamba. Uh, we have questions. Is there any? You will introduce yourself, the institution that you represent, 
and based on the uh, deliberations that have been made and submitted, you can ask your question. Yeah. Tell us your name and your institution. Yes. Okay. My brother. I am Kaptura Afias from Kamnet TV. I want mm -hmm. to get you on two issues. Uh, the first one is I want a, an official response from yourself. Mm -hmm. Government yesterday did say the patriotic plant are on record to say former President Ed Galungu is still the party president. Mm -hmm. uh, that is Mr. Mweta was quoting Mr. Poma Nusambo, when I become Nusambo. So I want to get, is this the official position of the party? And also, are you aware of the consequences that come with that, as he was saying? Uh, then is this, um, you, are, you are saying that you are going to challenge the letter from the South Societies. I want to, to find out, don't you think this route you are taking is going to can send the party into oblivion? Why not have the, the party convention? Uh, thank you. Hanot Kasama, ZNDC. Yes, I'm uh, Hanot Kasama from ZNDC. My question is threefold. I will zero in on his question. Um, following the directive by the uh, Restore Society, mm. 60 days ultimatum to hold a uh, part convention. Is uh, that ultimatum feasible? And then uh, connected to that, uh, what has uh, necessitated the nature by the part of Front to hold the convention? I recall we have postponed uh, for a long time. Then uh, thirdly, uh, in terms of Article 60 of the, the Constitution, they have stipulated that uh, part of the requirement of the political parties to have the national character. Would you say that the Patriot Front is still having that national character as a political party by now after the 2021 general election? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, before maybe you take that question, we can take the third uh, question. And uh, then we will ask our Ambassador Mamba to, to answer, and then if there are any, we can proceed in that manner. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is uh, Chatewa Dominic uh, from Movie Television. My question, uh, Ambassador Mamba, is on the matter that you have raised about the newly constituted advisory body at the Electoral, Electoral Commission of Zambia. Uh, pursuant to part 18 of the Constitution of Zambia and zooming in on section 216, do you feel that there has been an abrogation of the law in terms of the mandate that the Electoral Commission does carry? Yeah, thank you. So maybe we can start with those three. Let me start with um, the remarks by Honorable Cornelius Mwetwa yesterday where he's quoting Boman Lusambo and that they are seeking legal advice. Well, I, 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 I don't understand how government can seek legal advice on speculations. Government has a letter before it where the former president um, uh, uh, notified government of his uh, 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 resignation. You are aware of that letter. So why do they want to engage legal opinion on speculations? We've also taken note of the various cases that have emerged alongside the decision of the Registrar of Societies. Clearly these matters are coordinated. There's a petition by Isaac Mwanza and Maurice Makula who are attempting to allege that the former president is in active politics and is therefore obtaining benefits under the former president's benefit act illegally. There's a letter written um, by Mr. Chilufia Tayadi through his lawyers that was written to the Attorney General and to the Secretary to Cabinet. Um, Messrs. Joseph Chiro and company wrote to them alleging that in their view, President Ed Galungu was in active politics and therefore his benefits must be withdrawn. There is... Um, an interesting court action by a youth activist, Mr. Michelo Chizombe, who alleges that President Ed Galungu was, uh, was not a qualified candidate in 2021. And he says President Ed Galungu's participation in that election was illegal because he had already served two terms as president. This one we are watching with keen interest. If President Lungu was... Uh, 
ineligible to participate in that election. We want to acquire a country of fresh elections. If Lungu was not a candidate and was illegal in 2021, subsequent activities then are rendered illegal. Yes. President Ichirema is not president. Yes. Everything should come to the old status quo yes. and we should go to elections. Exactly. When you are doing things desperately, you may not even know the consequences yes. of your actions. Yes. So, Mr. Michelo Chizombe has taken this petition before the High Court. We are watching it with keen interest. Yes. Because if Ed Galungu was illegal to participate in that election, we were just supposed to go to elections. Mm -hmm. There is another one, you know, they are, they are numerous. But these are all exercises in futility. The former president, we have indicated, their, their anger, their frustration, is that he appears on the list of office bearers the list that is at the registrar of societies. Why does he appear there? Because he was elected in 2021 for a period of five years. We have not elected a new party president to come and then amend with the registrar of societies. Why do they want us to amend legally? Do we have a president? No. That's why Honorable Lubinda is acting president. Do they want us to give them office bearers of Honorable given Lubinda who is acting president? No. They have to wait for our internal processes that allows us to have our constitutional conference, our extraordinary general conference, at which we will elect a party president. In fact, a new party president might even direct us that he wants even more new office bearers. He might even change the existing one. Until that is done, President Edgar Lungu will appear on that list because we have not exhausted the process internal process for us to get a new president. So all these actions, some that might even backfire on them, are irregular, are irrelevant. We call upon them to be patient. Does President Lungu chair our central committee? No. no. Does President Lungu participate in by-elections? We no. currently have by-elections and our members of central committee are all over campaigning. Is President Edgar Lungu participating in active politics or partisan politics? No. 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 His crime is at what is President Lungu doing. When he begins to jog at his jogging, when he goes to church at he has gone to church, when he carries Dr. Frank Ngambi to Ndola, why is he carrying a member of Central Committee? Mm. When he goes to the market, it's a problem. Mm. Are we going to prescribe who the President yeah. must associate with? Who are we? The Constitution has allocated him powers, freedoms, and rights. He can choose who he wishes to be with. If President Haka Inde Ichirema is his friend, you can even call him and jog together. So if he chooses to be with Nakachinda or with Celestine or with district commissioners or with students, how does that become active politics? The paranoia by President Haka Inde Ichilema. The paranoia by this government is totally misdirected. We have various national crises. We have food insecurity, the agricultural sector has collapsed. We, we may not have proper food next year. Our people are suffering and reeling in high prices of millimeter, cooking oil, fuel, electricity. We want to work well, sir. If you to quit, if you are as a country, there are so many issues. So this preoccupation with the former president is a sideshow. They want you Zambians to be discussing President Lungu. That's why in our official statement, President Lungu is not there because we think that there are fundamental issues to discuss. If President Edgar Lungu wishes to come and stand, you can't stop him. But he has not said. He has told you he has resigned. Why are you calling him back into active politics? So, sir. So, we want to acquire, sir. We are watching this space, but we can warn them that these activities are futile. But maybe they might pursue the petition by Michel Ochizombe, who says President Lungu participated in the elections illegally, because that's very good news. It means we, we must have fresh elections now. Yeah. Um, the 60 days are ultimatum, uh, uh, Mr. Hanok Kasama. Like we've said.
these new powers that have been given to the chief registrar of societies by the statutory instrument that was issued on 9th May 2023, statutory instrument number 592. The statutory instrument itself is illegal and our lawyers will advise us how to go about it. In fact, we might need to take a joint action with other opposition members of parliament, I mean other opposition political parties. This action is illegal, it's ultraviolet, it's against the Constitution, it's against the Societies Act. The minister who issued this knows that this SI is illegal. But this is what you do when you are so desperate to deregister the PF. You even engage in illegalities. We will not participate in their illegalities. The 60 days ultimatum is a nullity. We don't even have to pay attention to it. Because the authority weight this statement is being derived on has no legs, has no legal status. Just two months ago, the chief registrar of society in responding to Mao Sampa, she said, I have no powers to supervise political parties. I have no powers to ask them to call for convention or conferences. Just two months ago. So these powers are illegal. The minister is engaged in cowardly acts. He should go to parliament, face his peers, and tender these proposals that he wishes to. And let him debate with the, our members of parliament on the validity of these proposals he's doing. He can't sneak them illegally through a statutory instrument. He's abusing the powers of a statutory instrument. Um, Mr. Chatewa, on the abrogation of the law, I think they are all related to, to, to this uh, and have answered the matters. Is there a particular matter? Dominic, is there a particular angle who is going to take an... Okay, we can take, I think... Uh, no, sir. I think I've in answering to the others, I've answered your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. We can take any further questions. You haven't answered us to when you intend to hold a convention, regardless of that what may done by the Restore Society. Oh, our, our program for the, uh, 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 the conference is ongoing. The Central Committee meeting on 21st of um, October is discussing that matter and other matters like i stated that we're supposed to have a constitutional conference which is preceding the extraordinary general conference on 29th july we missed that deadline for various reasons financial logistics and other reasons so it has affected the holding of the general conference extraordinary general conference for 28th october so the secretary general will bring a report to central committee about these developments and central committee will then make a determination and will inform you Yeah. This is the hand behind you. Uh, thank you. Um, my question is uh, looking at um, your name. Uh, looking at the current happenings, there have been a lot of uh, constitutional breaches, either by parliament, uh, by the head of state, or other individuals. There have been a lot of some consistent constitutional breaches. Cite some example that uh, I can rely like on. The one that you have cited. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Kabushi uh, issue also. We said it was, the constitution was breached. The signing of the Auditor General, it's against mm. the constitution. There have mm. been a lot of these things yeah. that happen. Yeah. What is the best way to deal with them besides calling them out? Okay. Any more questions? Do we wind up on the questions? No more questions? We will pursue all means and mechanisms. We will pursue public campaigns. We will pursue demonstrations. We will pursue protest. We will pursue legal challenges. Look at the uh, Kwacha and Kabushi. Our two candidates were unfairly treated, were unfairly excluded. We have gone to court and we have two or three judgments in our favor so far. And there is a main petition to have those two elections nullified, which is currently going on in the Constitutional Court. The Constitutional Court in this earlier ruling agreed with us that Honorable Joe Malanji and Honorable Boman Lusambo were unfairly and illegally prevented from participating in this, in this election. Yeah. Yeah. The appointments of these 27 judges, we raised concern, you remember. We stated that, for example, the 
gentleman that was appointed to be deputy president was not qualified to hold that office. We had never seen him discuss constitutional matters. He has never written about the constitution. He's never even really, really practiced, especially on constitutional matters, to be appointed straight from the streets to the position of deputy uh, 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 president of the constitutional court. We raise the issue of a cadre, a well-known cadre appointed as a judge. This is a cadre we argue with on social media. She wears UPND regalia. She was appointed as um, a judge. We even took a court action in that matter. So we'll be placing these matters on record. The Auditor General, let us explain. If there is any law I've seen that is strict about the age, it's a position of the Auditor General. It says minimum qualification, you have to be 45. So no matter how qualified, how educated, how experienced you are, if you are not 45 and above, you cannot be an Auditor General. And because of the rigor and the work required to do that office, it caps it at 60. You can retire at 55, get your full benefits, and finally retire at 60. That's what the Constitution says. Why would anyone breach that? And like I said, they should not use the arrogance and bully of numbers in Parliament to allow for these breaches to occur. We are putting them on record and we are working with Zambians to put these matters on record. There will be a day of reckoning. There's another hand. Yeah. Please introduce yourself Good and... Uh, Elijah? Elijah Ngoma. Yes, Mr. Ngoma. I wanted to find out um, from a press briefing uh, where they are preparing for the National Day of Prayer and Fasting. Okay. I wanted to find out because there was a question that was posed concerning the demonstrations that the opposition is planning to carry out on that same day. I wanted to find out is PF going to go ahead with the demonstration or they are going to attend the same National Day of Prayer and Fasting? Thank you very much. I think the organizers of the protest prayer were very clear. They are youths. They are not affiliated with to any political parties. And for some of you that have interviewed them, I think they are not members of any political parties. These are activists. We are all surprised. But when about Cornelius Mwetua, uh, you know, we may miss Chushkas and in our silence our wisdom. This one is talking too much and is making too many mistakes. And every press conference is, is brewing more crises and more lies. He's just been there two weeks and is more discredited than the silent Chushkas Sanda. So uh, he came on um, a press conference last week and alleged that the PF was organizing this prayer on a sacred day of National Day of Prayer. Uh, reconciliation and uh, he, he said these lies why did he say them because the police have uh, the organizers they have the address of the organizers they have the letter identity of the people that applied but as is customary to the UPND they want to paint a broad brush of scandal on the PF they want to paint us in the darkest of form so, as you have seen in your question, you have even proceeded to assume that the PF is organizing that protest. It's a protest by young people, and they've said it's a protest prayer. It's not the ordinary prayer. They say they'll be chanting verses, and they'll be singing psalms. I think that's a protest I can join as a Christian. Because if where people are chanting prayers and verses, I want to join such a the protest but we are not organizing it when we organize a rally we inform you when we organize a demonstration we inform you when we organize a meeting we inform you we do not do anything under the table so we wish the youths well and i like to appeal to other young people to join this protest prayer i think they are working from is it cabinet office to freedom statue wherever it is get the activities go and pray with the young people because what is their prayer is that there are no jobs that the high cost of living they are saying the high cost of living and that there are no opportunities for young people 
Na ngubasa rizili ya wapoka kui university. Mwapapela 2,000 na wabantu wa 35,000. It's a drop in the ocean. So the young people have their own cause. And our duty is just to align ourselves to their cause and support them. Will the PF support the National Day of Prayer? The PF, you know, is founded on Christian values. Our founding president, President Michael Sata was very clear that he was going to rule this country based on ten commandments. And uh, President Edgar Lungu came on, declared this day of national prayer, and also commissioned the construction of the uh, National House of Prayer, which President Akainde and UPND have abandoned. This is a national project. It's not a PF project. And we hope that for the first time, President Akainde Ichilema will be available at the National Day of Prayer. We love Samina Muliwa, Vice President. Let him lead. You know what the Bible said. You should be the head of your household. You should lead your household into prayer. The president is our first family. He's the head of our family in Zambia. He should lead the country in this National Day of Prayers. Chilabushiku, we have a program. Last year, we have to go to the election. We have to go to the When you have such an important day, just to avoid the day of national prayer, he ran away to Lupososhi. Of course, our people in Lupososhi were glad to receive him. But they were asking, Makateka Tamukuma Pepo. Absent father. Absent father. So we participate in the National Day of Prayer. We urge Zambians to observe this day. It's a very important day in the spiritual life of our country. With the moral decay we are seeing, the celebration of gay rights in this country, the celebration of homosexual lifestyle. If there is any time to pray, it is now especially from the spiritual perspective. Thank you very much. If there are no other questions, we may call the meeting to close. We started with prayer. We can end with prayer. We can stand. We bow before the Heavenly Father with thankful hearts. That through your love, through your grace, Heavenly Father, we've gone through this program, which you knew, Heavenly Father, even before we woke up, that it will come to pass. We are so thankful, Heavenly Father. We pray for the leadership of the party. We pray for the leadership, Heavenly Father, in that give them the wisdom. Give them, Heavenly Father, the fear of your name. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are gathered here as they go back to their various assignments, Heavenly Father. Cover them under your grace, under your and indeed under your blood, so that they are able to see their way. Thank you, we pray, Heavenly Father, that disperse us accordingly. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, family, and thank you for your attendance. Uh, you can wait here while the leader.